Hello and welcome to Special Data Hub. In this video, I will show you how to create maps using Google My Maps. It's a platform provided by Google that can help you create customized maps, create design routes, and even collaborate for free all on Google My Maps. So this video will teach you everything you need to know. To assess it, simply type on your search engine Google My Maps and you will see the first link that pops up do how to open it to access the home page now here you have maps which i have created in the past you might find yours as empty so let's create a new map the metadata will be stored in the drive that's this pop-up click on create so it takes you to the default location now let's search for our location of choice. Let's say Los Angeles. Excellent. Okay. So let's say as part of our maps, these first parts will be, we want to create a layer of e trees in Los Angeles. As you can see, you can see some of these nice spots in los angeles so we can name our map currently it's named on titles map let's see los angeles so to add points to your map there are different ways which you could do this i'll show you the first we could use known points. For example, we see a point here. We can click on the point and add to map. You can see how it's automatically added to the layer here. So we can rename this layer to say, oh, food spots. Another way which we, which we could add points is by searching for these points. Let's search for Honda Pisa. Honda Pisa. You can search for points. Stick CD. Click on Add to Map. And the points automatically added to your map. You could also add points using um, the feature here. Here we have us it as a line. We'll get to that. Now, another thing we could do, we could adjust these points. Let's just add a few more points. Add this to the map. Add this to the map. Now we can adjust these points. We can edit these points using any of the tools here. Let's change the style of these points. We can use this um, icon. We can change the icon. You can browse the library for even more icon choices. And you could search here, let's say food. Excellent. Now we have different icons to choose from and click on OK. You could change the color of the icon here. That works. On your browse for more icons, you could also create a custom icon from by importing an image into your drive in, into your from your computer or from your drive and or Google Images. You can try that at your own time. So that's about it. We can close this. The next tool we'll look at is the edit tool. We could edit the name of this point if you want to make it more descriptive you could add a description the best i'm not this is not a sponsored post foods in la click on save another thing you could do is to add an image or a video so let's add an image you could upload one from your computer you could use Google Images. Let's search for Barrow. 
Excellent. So you could use this kind of image and search. Now, when your user searches this point on your map, they will see save. They will see an image associated with it. You could also add videos. Let's go to YouTube and search for special data hub. That's the name of this channel. Do well to like and subscribe to this channel to support. Now I'll add this video that talks about Google Street View and how to use Google Street View to find locations on the map. So you can scroll through these images as you want. That's about it here. Click on save. And then the next is um, directions. You see it's, it's called directions to here. So you could add directions. It adds up a new layer. You can rename this layer to Bam Barrow Barrow to Honda Honda Pizza. Click on save. Now this search tab is general to Google Maps, but it gives preference to, it gives you closer searches for the parts on your map already. Yeah, the points on your map. So we can add that destination here. As you see, it already automatically brings out a driving route. If you want this driving route to compulsorily go through first street, you could just click on it and drag it through first street and it takes your route through first street. You can add more destinations to this link. You could add, um, what else could we add? E thirds. Yep. Excellent. So you could add different locations. You could switch the, between these points, which will be point A and which will be point B by just moving it on your map and it changes your route accordingly. So you could use this to plan a route. If you are to visit multiple points in the city, you can plan a destination, plan a trip, and also share this map route, which you have created to your viewers and um, visitors as well. There are so many other things we could do. We could change our base map. Probably this map is a little noisy. You can change this base map by clicking on the drop down, and you have a few options here. Not a very wide range of options, but options anyways. You could change to one without the um, locations on it. You could change to one with less description as you choose this. So this is. The one which we could use, I'll stick with this. Can close this pop up. And I think we could do, we could import points. Okay. Let's add a new layer. You could also, you would also know that um, this, your layers have a limit of 10 layers per project. So to import points, let's try this. You can use an Excel file or a KML file. When importing an Excel file, we, you will be requested to select what these points are, the location coordinates, okay? So if you select the X coordinates, this point, this column on the Excel file is X, that will be um, longitude, right? Yeah, so we select it as longitude. And then we we'll select the Y, identify the Y as the latitude. It just wants to know what's the longitude, what's the latitude. I'll click on OK. And then to now see, say pick, choose a column to title your markers. I want to title it to the pull IDs and finish. Everything is all set up. You could also import KML files. Let's import another file. That'll be on a new layer. 
we can import another file. Let's import a KML file. Yeah, it doesn't need to ask you any questions. It automatically reports your files for you. And you can change these. You can change the markers. You can change the colors. You can edit these just like the rest of the points which I showed you earlier. You can also do something else here. You can click on these power lines here and say open data table. And you will see the data table, the attributes of each of these points and you can click on them and they'll be automatically highlighted so you could use this to um, store your data you could use this to share data i'll show you how to do that but you could use it as a simple simple mapping way even if you have created your map elsewhere you can bring it back into google my maps to share your maps easily for other users Next thing which we will do, there are other tools here which you can use to undo and redo a step. You can use this to pan. Yep. You can use this to draw a line. Add a line. You can use this to draw a line feature. When you're done, you double click and then you give it a name and add it to any of these features. You can share your map by clicking on share and check this box to see anyone with this link can view it. And then you copy the link and share your map. Okay. Yeah. You can also share it on the drive and then use this point to add email accounts of those who can access it. You can add the restrictions. You can add the restrictions here. Change the restrictions to and privileges as well. You can deal with that. Next is that you can embed your map on a website. And are clicking on this. For you to be able to do this, you need to have um, allowed sharing first before you can embed your map. So click on this and copy this code and embed it as a HTML code. On the website, you will see directions on how to do that. So click on OK. You can preview your map. You can also print out your map. Let's see. Print. Portrait. Choose your choice. And that's about it for Google My Maps. Let me know if you had any troubles assessing any of these features. One thing, one feature which I think Google My Maps should include, or maybe I haven't found it yet, is the zoom to a layer. So considering you have multiple layers, you can always, it's cool if you can zoom to a particular layer and just have it easily accessible without running out your screw wheel. That'll be it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions or any troubles, or any more extra ideas, and I'll see you in the next video.